All right, my secondary math two class, we are going to be continuing to talk about trigonometry. And today we will mostly be solving for missing sides of triangles using the trigonometric functions. Okay, well, before we do that, we actually need to know what the trigonometric functions are. Okay, so let's make this note on the side of our paper. Remember, we have S for sine. Okay, and that goes with opposite over hypotenuse side. We have C for cosine, and that goes with our adjacent over hypotenuse side. And we have T for tangent, and that goes with our opposite over adjacent side. Remember, think so ka toa. So ka toa. I know, super annoying, but it helps you remember it. All right. Okay. So, for numbers 1 and 2, it's asking us to find the value of each trigonometric ratio. This is a lot like we were doing last time. Remember, ratio means fraction. It's these guys. Something over something. Okay? So, let's look at number 1. Okay, so it's asking us to find the cosine of angle Z. Okay, so find angle Z in this triangle. So, angle Z is right there. Okay, so now from angle Z, we need to identify which of these sides is the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay, so hypotenuse is probably our easiest to find because it's always right across from our right angle. Okay, so that means that 41 is our hypotenuse. Okay, well now we have this 9 and the 40. So the 9 side is right next to this angle. It's touching it. So that means that is our adjacent side. Remember, if you live adjacent to your neighbor, that means you live next to your neighbor. Okay, well then we have 40. 40 is on the opposite side from our angle, so that means that is our opposite side. Okay, beautiful. So now we can set up this trigonometric ratio using the sides that goes with cosine. Well, what two sides do we need for cosine? Okay, let's look back. C for cosine, we need adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so how we write this is cosine of Z equals adjacent 9 over hypotenuse 41. Okay, well now we just need to check and see if we can reduce this fraction at all. Is there any number that goes into both 9 and 41? No, there's not, so this is our final answer. Cosine of z equals 9 over 41. And that's it. All right, let's look at number 2. So it's asking us to find tangent of c. Tangent of c. Okay, so find angle c. So we have angle c right there. Okay, well now we need to identify the adjacent, the opposite, and the hypotenuse sides. Okay, so we know that our hypotenuse is always across from our right angle, so that means 40 is my hypotenuse. Okay, well 32 is the side that's touching this angle, so that is my adjacent side. And then 24 is on the opposite side of that angle, so that means that is my opposite side. Okay, well, which two sides do we need with tangent? So look over here, tangent, I need opposite over adjacent. Okay, so we're going to write this as tangent of C equals opposite, 24, over adjacent, 32. Okay, now looking at 24 over 32, can I reduce that? Can I reduce that fraction? Yes, I can divide both of these guys actually by 4. Okay, 4 and 4. Let's see what we get. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 32 divided by 4, I believe, is 8. Let's double check. Divided by 4. Yep, 8. Okay, so now I have 6 over 8. Can I reduce 6 over 8? Yes, I can. I can reduce it one more time give myself divided by 2 because the 2 goes into both of them and I get 3 over 4. So final answer for number 2 is tangent of C equals 3 over 4. 
And there we go. We set up the trigonometric ratios. Alrighty. Okay, so for numbers three through eight, it's asking us to find the missing side of our trite triangles. Find the missing side of right triangles. Now at the beginning of this unit, we were finding the missing sides of right triangles using the Pythagorean theorem. But remember, that only works if it gives you two sides and you're trying to find the third. Now it's giving us an angle and a side, okay? So we have to use our trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, to find the missing side. So the first thing we want to do is always identify what the angle is that it's giving us. So in number three, it's giving us 48. Okay, so now using 48, what two sides is it giving us? Okay, adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse, which two sides? Okay, so I know that it's giving me my hypotenuse because X is across from the right angle. Okay, and then 13 is right next to that 48. So that is my adjacent side. Okay, so now I need to figure out, well, which trigonometric function, sine, cosine, or tangent, uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Let's look over here. Which uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. Okay, so we're going to set this up by cosine of the angle. Remember, the angle always goes by the function. So cosine of 48 degrees equals adjacent, 13, over hypotenuse, x. Okay, well, how in the world are we going to solve for x if the x is on bottom? Okay, remember, if you remember from last time, whenever it's on bottom, we have to get it out from the bottom. So what is the opposite of divide by x? You're going to multiply by x. Okay, that moves it over here. Okay, so now we have x times cosine of 48 equals 13. Okay, well now we're looking at this side with our x. We need to get x by itself. Okay, well it's being multiplied by this whole piece, cosine of 48. So what is the opposite of multiply by cosine of 48? We are going to divide by cosine of 48. That gets rid of it right there. Divide it over here. And this is where we need a calculator because our x is going to equal 13, so 13 divided by, want your cosine button right there, cosine of 30, whoops, delete, 48 degrees. And we hit enter. And now it wants it to the nearest tenth. That means one decimal place after the decimal. Okay, so we look at the four, but then we look at the number after the four. This is a two. So remember, five and above, we round up. Anything below five, we stay the same. So since it's a two, that four stays a four. So our x is 19.4. So we solved that this missing side was 19.4. And there we go. Okay, let's try that again on number four. Okay, so first thing to identify is the angle that it gives us. So it gives us 40 degrees. Okay, well now what two sides is it giving us based on that 40 degrees? We have our hypotenuse again across from our right angle and our opposite. Ooh. Okay, so now which function do we use with opposite and hypotenuse? Okay, look back up here. We use sine, opposite and hypotenuse. Okay, so we're going to set this up, sine of 40 equals opposite x over hypotenuse 12. Okay, well now looking at my side with my x, there's only one thing I need to get rid of to get x by itself. What is the opposite of divide by 12? Easy peasy, we are going to multiply by 12 on both sides. Okay, so our x is all by itself over here. Now this is where we can put it in the calculator. So we want 12 times sine, so hit your sine button right there, sine of 40 degrees. Enter, 
Okay, we want it to the nearest tenth, so look at this number after the seven. Okay, it's a one, so that seven is gonna stay a seven. So X is equal to 7.7, .7, which was our missing side right here. Beautiful. Okay, let's look at number five. Identify the angle it gives us. So it gives us 34 degrees. Now, which two sides is it giving us based on 34? Okay, so again, it gives us our hypotenuse across from our right angle. And then 15 is touching the 34, so that is our adjacent side. Okay, so again, which function do we use with adjacent and hypotenuse? Let's look back up here. Adjacent and hypotenuse, we're going to use cosine. Okay, so let's set it up. Cosine of the angle, 34 degrees, equals adjacent, 15, over hypotenuse, x. All right, so again, we see that my x is on bottom. We gotta move it from the bottom. So what is the opposite of divide by x? I'm gonna multiply it by x. Okay, that moves it from that side to that side. Okay, well now we have x times cosine of 34 equals 15. Okay, so now looking at our side with the x, what is the opposite of multiply by this piece to get x by itself? we're going to simply divide by that whole piece to get x by itself. All right, so x is all by itself on this side now. Now we can just put this whole piece into our calculator. So now we have 15 divided by cosine button right here of 34 degrees. Enter one decimal place. Okay, so it's looking for this decimal place. Look behind it, it's a nine. So that nine is gonna change that zero to a one. So our answer is 18.1, which is our missing side right there. Beautiful. Okay, so let's do that again. Number six, a lot of practice today. What angle does it give us? It gives us 32. What two sides does it give us based on that angle? We have our adjacent side, because it's touching that 32. And then we have the opposite side, okay? Notice it's not giving me the hypotenuse. So we have adjacent and opposite. Okay, well, which function are we going to use with adjacent and opposite? We have opposite and adjacent. We're gonna use tangent this time. Okay, so we're gonna set this up tangent of the angle, 32, equals opposite x over adjacent 11. Okay, only one step to get x by itself on this side. What's the opposite of divide by 11? We are going to multiply by 11. Okay, so x is all by itself on this side. Now we just need to put this whole piece into our calculator. So we have 11 times tangent, tangent button, of 32 degrees. And I get 6.8, but it wants it to this decimal place, so let's look behind it. Okay, that's a seven, so that's gonna change that eight to a nine. So our final answer is 6.9. 6 6.9. Which again is this side right there. Awesome job. Two more. Okay, number seven. Which angle does it give us? Gives us 58 degrees. Okay, which two sides does it give us now? Okay, so this one does give me my hypotenuse across from my right angle. And then it gives me the opposite side. So we have opposite and hypotenuse. Okay, well, which function uses opposite and hypotenuse? we see sine opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so set it up, sine of the angle, 58 degrees, equals opposite x over hypotenuse, 14. Beautiful. 
Okay, looking at our side with our x. There's only one thing I need to do to get rid of this divide by 14 to get x by itself. What is the opposite of divide by 14? We are going to multiply by 14. So we get x is all by itself on that side. Well, what is 14 times sine of 58? Let's put it in our calculator. <coughs> Excuse me. 14 times sine of 58 equals 11.8. Okay, it wants it to this decimal place. The 7 behind the 8 will turn that 8 into a 9. So our final answer, 11.9. So our side was 11.9. Great job. All right, last example. What angle does it give us? 35 degrees. Okay, what two sides does it give us based on that angle? Okay, I see it gives me my hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, and it gives me the opposite side. Okay, so again, what function are we using with opposite and hypotenuse? Sine again. Okay, so we're going to set it up sine of our angle, 35, equals opposite, 19, over hypotenuse, x. All right, looking at our side with our x, we need to get this x off the bottom. Okay, we can't solve when it's on the bottom. So what is the opposite of divide by x? Multiply by x. Do it to both sides. So now we have x times sine of 35 equals 19. Okay, so again, let's look at our side with our x. Okay, well, it's being multiplied by this whole piece. So what is the opposite of multiply by sine of 35? we are going to divide by sine of 35. That gets rid of it, puts it over here. So we get x is all by itself. And we just need to put this whole piece into our calculator. So we have 19 divided by sine of 35. Okay, to the nearest 10, 33.1, the two after the one, makes it so the one stays the same. So our final answer, 33.1. And that was our missing side, 33.1. Alrighty, those are your notes for today. There is an assignment that goes with them.